Hey guys, this is Afrotaku, back again with another Molog. If you looked back at one of my earliest Mologs and other videos, as well as that fanfic riffing series that I have yet to start up, you know that one anime that I was really into back in the day was The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya. For those who either don't know or remember the show, it's about this guy named Kion who, on his first day of high school, meets this girl named Haruhi Suzumiya. She claims to be looking for aliens, time travelers, and espers. After one faithful conversation, Haruhi decides to start a club in hopes to find said people called the SOS Brigade. But little does she know that the members she brings in are actually an alien, time traveler, and esper. Why are they there? Because they're ordered to look after her, for she is the new god of that universe. But only Kion has to notice, or else if she finds out, the world could potentially end depending on her attitude. At the time, this series was a huge deal. A title that many claimed you didn't truly experience anime until you watched it. If you were getting into anime at the time, you probably ran into it several times through Haru Yukai or many episode uploads on YouTube really cementing it as a global phenomenon. A game changer of a show that put KyoAni on the map as a major player in Japanese animation. And in terms of myself, I was hooked on it. It was one of the first anime that I truly obsessed over, and it made me more interested in the medium. Everything from the concept to the characters to the breathtaking animation felt very refreshing from what I usually watched at the time. The idea that a high school girl like Haruhi being a god was wild, bizarre, and maybe a little taboo to some people, but it's just an example of how out there anime storytelling is. And yes, it did have moments that were pretty bonkers, but I felt that was part of the entertainment value. Like there was a genuine intrigue and charm buried under all the madness. At least to people like me. Plus, as Robin from Anime America pointed out, it was kind of a satire on existential crisis, which, yeah, that was a good way of putting it. And seeing how this was one of my big gateway titles, that must mean that I have plenty of fond, nostalgic memories with the Brigade. Well, if only it was that simple. I wouldn't say there were no memories that were pleasant, but the ones that weren't. Oh, god are they hard to look back on. But before we get into that, maybe I should go back to the beginning. The way I discovered Haruhi was through two different sources, Caramel Dancin and YouTube Poops, namely ones by Catpan6. Admittingly, I didn't take too much notice at first due to routine, but the more snippets I saw of it, the more curious I became. I previously came across it in 2008, but didn't fully experience it until 2009. A year in which it was still pretty big with season 2, but we'll get to you know what later. 2009 was also the same summer I discovered KHF through a video where he told people to stop comparing Haruhi to Lucky Star. In which Lucky Star, I think I previously discovered through another YouTuber I once followed to name Miss Oliver and Blossom. After watching a video that the KH of today's most likely not proud of anymore titled Why I Like Hari, is what truly convinced me that this was a show worth watching, and it turned me into a fan. From watching the abridged series by Fullmetal Chow to reading the original books it was based on, it was somewhat of an exciting time for me, which leads to the more troublesome aspects of this newfound obsession. Starting with perhaps the earliest one, Kion. I didn't always like Kion. At first, I just saw him as a total stick in the mud compared to Haruhi's more eccentric persona. He wasn't as amusing and kinda came off as a killjoy to all the quote unquote fun. Plus, I kinda found his snarky monologues to get on my nerves at times and I used to see him as rather unlikable. That's not to say he didn't have moments and character traits that one could read as unlikable. But, the thing is, I disliked him for all the wrong reasons. 
I really disliked the times where he would badmouth Haruhi or thought up ideas that were at her expense. For back then, I did view her as someone who had a point with how ordinary life is boring and she can do no wrong. I was a dumb angsty teen going through a phase, cut me some slack. I even recall a time where I brought the second book to school to read and told the teacher I was close with of a certain moment without providing proper context. When really, those who've watched and remember the show could argue, can you really blame Kyon? If anything, given how hard he can be and how she treats him and the others, he has every single right to act snarky and sarcastic with her, because most of the time, she's a pain in the ass. I also used to be annoyed with the fact that he was technically the main character due to the reasons I previously mentioned, when really, it kinda made perfect sense for that to be the case. He's the one with the conscience, he's the one with common sense to him. He knows about Haruhi's powers while the god herself is completely unaware, but most of all, he's the one who's come to terms with how things are while Haruhi's still searching for the phenomenon that he long since moved on from. This made him the perfect foil in that regard. So while I didn't start out liking him, he did eventually grow on me. He had a lot of the best lines, and was by far one of Crispin Freeman's best roles. With one issue gone, I still had two more complications to deal with. Being the passionate fan I was, I did act pretty defensive about the Haruhi franchise for a while and got discouraged whenever I saw people being unfavorable with it. Like saying it's really stupid, or one of the worst, or even that it's actually garbage, and going into great lengthy detail on why it's actually garbage by pointing out all the flaws was really common. When really, that's usually the case when any show gets that popular. If Ruby and Steven Universe are anything to go by. That end, I didn't really have many people that shared the same interests with Haruhi as me. No one except... KHF, who I became friends with back then. Sounds better than nothing, right? Well... Then we reached the last of these complications. My views on Haruhi Suzumiya herself. At first, I was favorable on Haruhi. I admired a lot about her and thought, she looked hot, at the time. But as the months passed, I started to acknowledge her more negative traits more, and my feelings on her became much more complicated. Because looking back, wow was she a controversial character. Perhaps the most polarizing of her time. Now speaking for myself, I think there were some things to like about her. I recall finding her energetic and happy attitude to be pretty infectious, as well as her confidence, determination, and subtle moments of character development to be things to admire. And the few times where she does a kind gesture or acts... decent? They are wholesome and can make you feel good inside. But her more bad traits... Yeah, I can see how they would rub some people the wrong way. Her selfishness and egotism had a lot to be desired, and a lot of her actions can be borderline criminal-like, resorting to blackmail, borderline bullying, and even those moments of sexual harassment to either prove a point or to get her way. Those boob-groping moments were awkward back then, I bet they become even more awkward in this day and age. And there's also the setup in a nutshell. Haruhi is a needy, bossy, arrogant girl who would hurt others to get her way, and it's the job of the brigade members to bend over and appease to her needs, or else it's bye-bye everything. Which... I can get how that would sound unappealing on surface level. But back then, I was in constant conflict with her. I tried convincing myself that her good deeds were enough to make up for her flaws, and others weren't being fair on her. While her good deeds, again, were nice, but they can also feel sparse. 
And there were times where her bad deeds were hard for me to ignore, and I would get too angry about her. All these led to times where I got defensive about her character to others in pretty aggressive ways, or times where I would rant and rave about her, much to the annoyance of those around me. This led to tons of pointless arguments with people like KHF. But then we get to the arc that spawned these troubled times. An arc that would show Haruhi at her most infamous. The Sigh of Haruhi Suzumiya. It starts out like any adventure with the SOS Brigade, as Haruhi decides to make a movie that was part of Season 1, The Adventures of Mikuru Asahina, for the school's cultural festival. Production starts out harmless enough, but would slowly escalate into chaos. Haruhi's powers starting warping reality around them, fitting it more into her narrative, leading to actual beam shots coming out of Mikuru's eyes, pigeons and trees started to change colors and seasons, to name just a few. But this was the arc where Haruhi started treating Miss Asahina more poorly than usual scolding her severely for her performances, having to be thrown into a pond, but worst of all, drugging her drink to make her seem tipsy for a kiss scene with Itsuki. All of which struck a huge nerve with Kyon. He rightfully had enough with Haruhi's treatment and started to tell her off, which leads to perhaps the darkest moment in the whole franchise. Everything from the lighting to music score felt like something out of a horror film, and as not real as he is, you could feel the blood boiling inside Kion during that scene. Things escalate more once Haruhi tries to defend herself, only to have Kion fight back and order her to not treat Mikuru as her toy, leading Haruhi to say the most hateful thing she could possibly say that Mikuru is in fact her toy. Being the final straw, Kion couldn't hold back any longer, and attempted to punch Haruhi square in the face, with Itsuki stopping him right in the process. So, this scene alone made me strongly dislike this arc back then, even more than the other infamous arc of Season 2. It just displayed the cast at their absolute worst and was just uncomfortable to watch. Though in terms of my thoughts on it today, well, the arc did its job. It marked the point where the series took itself much more seriously than ever before. And if you were to ignore certain moments afterwards, this could mark a turning point for the cast. Haruhi's attitude slowly but surely mellows out more, and we do learn more sides to the other members as well. Plus, there have been some real-life events that make me look back at this arc in another perspective, but I'm gonna save that topic for another video. Sadly, my past self would have yet to reach the point where I viewed the arc that way, and in the meantime, I was in constant conflict. When I felt I was over that episode, the irritation I had would eventually come back, and it led to constant states of arguing, defensive white knighting, and battling both perspectives I had with the show. And it was at that point where I realized that being a Haruhi fan was not as fun as I thought it was, when it resulted in so much conflict. So going through all that, you could probably guess why I'm not as obsessive as Haruhi as I was back then. There's just too many awkward memories to look back on from that phase. But as I said, they weren't all bad. I did eventually make more friends who also liked Haruhi, girlfriend included, and they ultimately became the extra push I needed to take KHF's words to heart, and truly put my Haruhi obsession into moderation. And upon talking about it with these new friends, it did lead to more pleasant memories with the franchise. But sadly, just when my views on Haruhi started to permanently change for the better, that was when the franchise slowed to a grinding halt. I remember the first signs of Haruhi's downfall, 
I went to that fan site HaruhiSuzumiya.net in December 2011, and the top article read, No Haruhi Season 3? Well, here we are eight years later, near the end of the decade, and no Season 3 has been made. To this day, no one knows what caused Haruhi's decline. Some say it was Aya Hirano's sex scandal. Others say it was KyoAni's new business model that threw IPs like Haruhi under the bus. When really, it was a number of unfortunate circumstances. But the biggest reasons I can boil down to two of the biggest culprits. First one being two words that probably still haunt fans to this day. Endless age. An arc that would go down in infamy for its repetitive nature and just feeling like an all-around waste of time. Especially since, Season 2 was probably the most hyped up thing for anime that year. And once it aired, people were beyond disappointed, feeling downright betrayed. So it became Haruhi's equivalent to Shrek the Third, and I feel it really affected home video sales. To many people, an entire season where a good chunk of it was the same thing but animated differently just didn't sound like that good of a bargain. And I was pretty much on the same boat. But another factor was aside, but that's unimportant to my point. This was pretty much the arc that would forever tarnish Haruhi's reputation. I thought the disappearance would redeem it, but even then... I think the damage was already done. But I feel the even bigger cause to Haruhi's irrelevance was the man behind it all, Nagaru Tanigawa. At one point, his publishing schedule really fell apart. Between the dissociation and the surprise of Haruhi Suzumiya was a near four-year gap between 2007 and 2011. So, even before I, Jesse, or KHF got into it, this problem kinda already began. He did eventually publish a new book, sure, but after that, no one has really heard from him since. It gives you the impression that he may have not expected Haruhi to become as big as it got, and felt pressured by fans and his publishers to make more novels to warrant a season 3. Which must have affected his motivation to continue on, and with no light novels to promote, there was no reason to continue Haruhi. And here we are now. What began as a phenomenon turned into something forgotten. Not many people talk about it anymore, and even when they do, some wonder if it was really all that great in the first place. Everyone from the fans to the original team and publishers have long since moved on, and the chances of a season 3 being made grow more and more dim with each passing year. That may sound like a sad rise and fall story, but given my complicated history with it, I honestly don't consider it that much of a loss. But with that said, does that mean I hate Haruhi now? Am I ashamed of my past love for it? Well, I don't know if I'd go that far. For all the negative side effects and dark, cringy memories. I don't think I can ever bring myself to hate this series. And that's mostly because, for better or worse, Haruhi did leave a major impact on me. Again, it was one of the very first titles that I watched to inspire me to become an anime fan. Pokemon may have been the first, but it was stuff like Haruhi that furthered it. And if it weren't for Haruhi and, to the same extent, Lucky Star specifically, I wouldn't have discovered KHF and eventually became his friend. And that ultimately led to me meeting Jissy, who might be just as, if not more important to me. Those two came in at a really awkward point in my life. Where the friends I had from childhood, mainly my best friend, we're heading in different directions in life. He just didn't have the time to truly hang out like when we were kids. Our interests differed and our time together more or less ended by graduation. 
There were even times where I felt isolated and left out, and one friendship I formed to try and solve that. Well, that eventually soured over time. But then I met those two. People that I have plenty in common with, and can always talk and turn to without leaving home. They've been a big help with my confidence and creative ideas, and their own tastes and recommendations did shape me into the anime fan I am today. There's also all the other friends I made throughout the years. Whether from Jack's end, or Jissy's end with the fanime community. All of which I also hold very dear to my heart. I don't know where I'd be today without them all, and I don't think I want to know. All of which, in many ways, were a direct result of my Haruhi phase. I'll never deny the side effects and bad memories that spawned from it, but at the same time, it did also lead to better things for me in the long run. As I say, you take the good with the bad. But of course, I feel I should be more grateful to the studio behind it all, Kyoto Animation. Here's a name that really defined my teenage years, for they were one of the first anime studios I became very familiar with, alongside Studio Ghibli. Every one of their works had something to say through different styles. From the complexity of Haruhi, to the contrasting tones of Fumofu and Second Raid, to the heartbreaking storytelling of the Key Trilogy, to even the mundane charm of Lucky Star. Even after a few years being off my radar, they found a way back into my heart with a silent voice. A film that is tear-jerking as it is powerful, telling a story about bullying and redemption through two strong leads as well as Liz and the Bluebird, a film so good that I didn't have to watch the original show to understand and appreciate the tale of two friends in their last year of high school, learning that their time together is almost up. These titles mean so much to me and many others, because they played a major part in our love for anime. While there are some shows that I sadly have yet to watch, I don't doubt the good things I hear about them, mainly because the people behind them were blessed with talent that's utilized into such masterful animation and storytelling, and were given the privilege to be in a work environment that treats men and women on an equal level, which is really important compared to other animation studios. Where names like Pixar get called out for mistreatment of females, it feels good knowing that KyoAni was above that allowing everyone to have a voice and input on whatever story they wanted to adapt. It's even more heartbreaking knowing that some of these people are no longer alive. I was far from prepared learning the horrible news that day. When I heard about the Kyoani arson attack, I felt a number of emotions. I felt mortified learning that one of my favorite studios had to be struck by such an awful tragedy. Seeing the building up in smoke was like seeing 9-11. And once the news that several noticeable names that mean a lot to me lost their lives, it felt like Steven Hillenburg all over again. I also felt anger learning that the person behind the fire was driven by malice and hate because they supposedly stole his idea. Which, even if they did, which I doubt, that didn't give him the right to resort to terrorism. But I just hope justice serves him. Hard. But thankfully, I also felt comfort learning about the fundraiser that Sentai Filmworks started in hopes to help KyoAni heal from this disaster, and thousands were willing to donate. I'm just ashamed that I couldn't spare money of my own in time, but at least so many people cared enough to prevent this from being the end of KyoAni, because it shouldn't be the end. They deserve to continue to make meaningful works of art till the end of time and not let hate stop them. 
And with a new headquarters, hopefully they'll be able to move forward. Even if things might never be the same. So at least there, we know KyoAni is covered. But with Haruhi, we don't know what the future will hold. Whether it continues to be the dead brand it is now, or by some miracle, makes a comeback. At least we can all say, it was nice while it lasted. But what about you guys? Did you watch Haruhi? If so, did you like it? Still like it? Never or don't anymore? Or is there another show that left a similar impact on you? Be sure to share in the comments below, but also like and subscribe. This is Afro Otaku, and let's hope for a brighter future for KyoAni.